Hello from Halifax. This is Joe with Joe to the World Creations, and today we're going to be making my charming no holes baby blanket crochet pattern. I'm so excited to share this crochet baby blanket pattern with you, and we're going to be getting right to the video tutorial. I'm going to be using a different size 3 yarn than what you see in the pictures just so that it's easier to see but for the exact yarn that I've used that you see in all these pictures as well as the hook size I've used and all of the other details please visit the pattern which is available entirely for free on my website or you can purchase the ad free print ready pdf and there are links to both in the description below this video. All right, let's get started. We're going to start by making a slip knot. So I'm going to make a loop, bring my fingers through the loop, pinch it, and pull a loop through, and then put that loop onto my hook and pull tight. Now we are going to chain 100. Couple notes here. If you want to adjust the sides, you can use any multiples of two plus two, meaning that your number of starting chains will be an even number. Another note is I'm just making a small sample of the blanket for this video tutorial, but I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. But if you want to make the full blanket that's in the pattern, chain 100. With our starting chains now made, we are going to begin row one. For row one, we are going to be working into the back ridge loops, which if you twist your starting chains, it's these bumps along the back. And we're gonna be working into them all the way across row one. So we are going to start by working into the second chain from the hook. So that's the first chain, this is the second chain, and then we're gonna rotate our chain and insert our hook into the back ridge loop, so the back bumps, and we're gonna single crochet. So there's our first single crochet stitch completed. And we're gonna single crochet in each back ridge loop all the way across. So you just insert your hook into the back bumps and single crochet. So you keep doing this all the way across and come back to the video when you're nearing the end and we'll finish the row together. So I'm nearing the end of row one. I have two chains left to work into. Nothing special happens, just thought it might be helpful to show you the end of the row. So I'm just simply going to single crochet into all the chains all the way across. This last chain can be a little tricky just because it's attached to that slip knot but still work into it the way we've single crocheted into the back ridge loops of each chain across. At the end of the row, you should have a total of 99 single crochet stitches now completed. To start row two, we are going to chain one and turn. We are going to work into the first stitch, the stitch here that's attached to the chain one that we just made. And into this first stitch, we are going to make a V stitch. Now, a V stitch means different things in different patterns. In this pattern, what a V stitch is, is single crochet, chain one, double crochet, in the same stitch or space. Let's do that together. So working into this first stitch, we're going to start our V stitch, which is a single crochet, chain one, and double crochet into the same stitch, which means we're going to double crochet into the same stitch that we just made our single crochet stitch into. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the same stitch, bring my yarn through, yarn over, bring my yarn through, two loops on our hook, 
two loops left, yarn over, bring that yarn through the last two loops. And we've just completed our first V-stitch. Now I wanna to bring to your attention, so you can just be keeping an eye on this, that every time we've made, we make a chain one, so we just did a single crochet, chain one, and then a double crochet. Every time we make a chain one, we are creating a chain one space that we are going to work into on the following row. So just note that we'll be working underneath this chain one and in between the single crochet and double crochet stitch into this space, not into tops of stitches, no, I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves. This is for the next row, but I just think it's helpful just so as you're making these V stitches, just to understand that we're gonna be working into this space in the next row. Now that we've completed our V stitch in the first stitch, we are going to skip the next stitch. We are not gonna work into the next stitch. We're going to skip that. And this part actually begins the repeat section for the row, what we'll be repeating all the way across, and it starts with skip the next stitch. So we're not going to work in this stitch. In the next stitch, the following stitch, under both loops just regularly, we're not working into any space this row, we're just crocheting normally as we normally would, into the next stitch, we're going to make another V-stitch. So we've, we're gonna skip the next stitch into the following stitch. We're going to make a V-stitch, which is single crochet, chain one, and double crochet in the same stitch. And there's our second V-stitch completed. And we're gonna repeat this all the way across skip the next stitch in the following stitch, V-stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same stitch. And you're gonna do this all the way across. So you can go ahead and put me on pause and come back to the video when you're nearing the end of the row Nothing special happens at the end of the row, but I'm just gonna show you really quick since I'm here. So I've just skipped a stitch, made a V-stitch in the following stitch. So as per the pattern repeat, I'm going, I have two stitches left. I'm going to skip the next stitch, and in the final stitch, which can be somewhat trickier to see just on this row, we are going to make a V-stitch into that final stitch. So once again, single crochet, chain one, and double crochet into this final stitch. At the end of the row, you should have a total of 50 V stitches now complete. So you're going to count them as one, two, three, four, five, six. That's, but you'll, you'll count 50 um, if you made 100 starting chains. You'll see also that the first V-stitch and the last V-stitch kind of come out more from the, the row of single crochet stitches we did. That's completely okay. You're gonna see some, um, some bumps as we, as we work up with this pattern, and that's supposed to be what's happening. And that uh, completes row two. Now we're going to start row three. And row three is what we're going to be repeating for the rest of the pattern. So to start row three, and every row from now on, we are going to chain one and turn. From this point on, we are only going to be working into the chain one spaces. We are not gonna be working into tops of stitches anymore for the rest of the blanket body. So the first thing we're going to do for row three is we're going to make a V-stitch into the first chain one space. Let's just look at the anatomy of the 
v-stitch so you really have a good understanding of where to work into so the first thing you'll see is a double crochet stitch so you can use that as a bit of a, a guideline so whenever you see a double crochet stitch and you can really see that bump sticking out so you can differentiate between um, where is a double crochet stitch so right to the left of it or directly to the left of it this is where you're going to work into into the space under the chain one so let's do this first so we've chained one and turned <clears throat> we are going to make a v-stitch into this chain one space which means we're going to insert our hook into the chain one space under the chain one and we're going to single crochet which is the first step of our v-stitch and then we're going to chain one and make a double crochet stitch into this same space. So we yarned over, insert our hook into that chain one space, and then finish our double crochet. For the rest of the row and the rest of the pattern, what we're gonna be doing is make a V stitch in the next chain one space. So this is where I wanted, I thought it would be helpful to point out really the anatomy so you can really see where to be working into. So this double crochet stitch has a bit of a bump here. So if you can find that bump, you go directly to the left of it under the chain one and you're going to make your next V stitch here. Let's do that together. So into the next chain one space and you can always separate the, your work, pull it apart, find that chain one. You can see a double crochet stitch here, single crochet stitch here, and this is where we're gonna insert our hook and make another V-stitch. So I'm gonna single crochet, chain one, and make a double crochet in the same chain one space. So we're just gonna continue making a V-stitch in each chain one space all the way across the row. I think the hardest part is just finding where you need to work into. So if you can really just pay attention to where that double crochet stitch is and go to the left of it, I found that to be the easiest thing. Or if you can see where that chain one is, then you work directly under it. And don't be afraid to, you know, pull your work apart, not pull it apart, just stretch it slightly so you can really see where you're working into. So this is where you're gonna work into. There's the double crochet, here's the chain one, here's the single crochet, insert your hook into that chain one space and make another V-stitch. So you're gonna do that all the way across. The very end of the row, nothing special happens, but your last stitch is going to be a V-stitch in the last chain one space. So here's the double crochet stitch, here's the single, and here's the chain one, and you're gonna work into this space right here and make your last V-stitch. Every row has the exact same amount of stitches. You should have 50 V stitches at the end of every row. And you are going to repeat what we just did for row three for the rest of the blanket body. You're simply going to chain one and turn in the first chain one space here, make a V stitch. and then make a V-stitch in each chain one space all the way across. And your final V-stitch is in the last chain one space here. So you are gonna repeat row three until the height of your blanket is approximately 30 inches, which for me was 96 rows. 
but the amount of rows is going to be determined by the yarn you're using and how tightly you crochet so it's best to measure the height and note that you can continue making repeating row three until you reach your desired size. It doesn't have to be 30 inches. However, if you make it any higher, you may require more yarn. So keep repeating row three, and after you've reached your desired height, come back to the video and we will do the border together. So I'm gonna pretend that I've reached my desired height for my blanket. Once again, you can end after any row. It doesn't matter which way is which. Um, you want to make sure you've just finished your final v-stitch and so your last stitch is a double crochet stitch and now we can start the border so let's begin with border round one and the first thing we are going to do is chain one and we are not going to turn what we're going to start by doing is single crochet evenly down the sides one thing that's important is that we want to insert our hook into the stitches when we make our single crochet stitches instead of into the spaces. This is what I mean by the space. We don't want to insert our hook here in single crochet. We want to insert our hook into the actual stitches under one loop or under two loops. Doesn't matter, just not into the spaces. So what we're going to be doing is, I'm just rotating my work here so it's easier to see. We are going to be single crocheting evenly all down the side. This is where I've worked into. It's You don't have to work exactly into these locations, but just in case it's helpful. Wherever there's a double crochet stitch at the end of a row, I'm going to make one single crochet stitch into the top of that double crochet stitch and one double crochet or one single crochet stitch into the bottom of it. And whenever I see a single crochet stitch from the end of a row, I'm gonna make one single crochet stitch into it. So I'm gonna make a single crochet stitch at the top of a double crochet and at the bottom, and then a single crochet stitch into another single crochet stitch. And that's all my guideline to get my stitches to be as e evenly spaced out as possible. So I've chained one, and what I'm going to do is into this same double crochet stitch, I'm going to just make one, double cr one single crochet into the double cr first double crochet stitch. The next stitch that I come upon is a single crochet, so I'm going to single crochet into it. Now I'm going to be working into a double crochet stitch, so I'm going to make one single crochet stitch at the top, and then another single crochet stitch at the bottom of it. You can kind of look at it like a rainbow. So at the start of the rainbow, for this side, I'm making a single crochet stitch at the start of the rainbow, and then just over the middle of the rainbow on this side, then making a single crochet stitch. And then at the bottom of the rainbow, or the bottom of this bump, I'm making a single crochet stitch. So I'm gonna do that all the way down, and, um, Again, not an exact science, don't need to put it in the exact same places, but we just want the single crochet stitches evenly sp spaced out. So you can go ahead and do that all the way down, come back when you're nearing the bottom of going down the sides, and we will do that part together. So I'm single crocheting evenly down the side. I'm getting close to the end of the side. Um, one thing I want to point out is your starting tail might be on this side or it could be on the other side. Truly doesn't matter which is which side it's on. So where we make our first corner stitch, um, you're welcome to determine that for yourself, but I'm going to show you where I've made mine. I've picked the last stitch before we work along the bottom. And I worked under just the one loop 
you're welcome to experiment to see what works best for you. But because this stitch is closest to the corner, that's where I'm gonna put my three single crochet stitches in the same stitch. So again, just you can you can experiment for what works best, but I'm going to make one more single crochet stitch before I do the corner. And now that I'm in the place where I want to be my corner, I'm going to insert my hook and make three single crochet stitches into this same stitch. So that's two and three. And that's our first corner completed. Now we're going to work along the bottom and we are simply going to single crochet in each chain all the way across the bottom. So inserting a hook under both loops and just single crocheting. So make one single crochet stitch in each chain along the bottom. And it's okay if it's tight, it's supposed to be. And just take your time and go all the way across and make one single cro oh, make one single crochet stitch in each chain along the bottom. And then when you're nearing the end of the bottom, come back to the video. So I'm nearing the end of working into each chain all the way across the bottom. I have one chain left here, so I'm going to single crochet into it, but I'm not going to make a corner stitch along the bottom. I am going to make my corner stitch into the first stitch that I can find along the sides here. So it's not an exact science, find the closest stitch to the corner. So where I want to make my corner is into this loop right here. See, this is the loop or the stitch that's closest to the corner. So that's the one I'm picking to be my second corner stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into this first stitch. I'm using, I'm just going under one loop, but you can absolutely go under two loops. And we're going to single crochet three times into this same stitch. So that was one and two, and then one more. And that completes our second corner. Now we are going to single crochet evenly up the side and I found and we're going to do the same thing that we did when we worked down the side um, but I found the first part to be a little tricky and then it got a little easier to see where I should put my stitches and again you can experiment to where you want to put yours but I'll just show you in case it's helpful so you see how there's a like a an arc here a, a little rainbow and here's this rainbow I found I put one single crochet stitch close to the bottom, the start of the rainbow, and then another single crochet stitch as we got close to the middle of the rainbow, and then another single crochet stitch. That one I always found the easiest to see because that's actually into a single crochet stitch. So there'll be three single crochet stitches in each of these bumps or rainbows. But the first one I found to be a little tricky. So in the first rainbow, I'm going to make a single crochet stitch. And you can decide whether you want to put another one into that first one. I don't think I do. I think for just this first bump, I'm going to just have this one single crochet stitch. And then on the other side of the rainbow, um, I can see a very good spot to put a single crochet stitch there. All right, so now let's make a single crochet at the bottom of the rainbow. I feel like, what is it? Is it leprechauns that talk so much about pots of gold at the bottom of the rainbow? Um, so there's, there's a, a single crochet stitch there. And then in the middle of the rainbow, I'm gonna insert my hook under one loop and make a single crochet stitch. And then at the other end of the rainbow, make a single crochet stitch. 
So I hope that's helpful. Again, you don't need to put them, put your stitches exactly where I'm putting them, but I just know um, that it can be sometimes helpful to have some guidance for this part. So keep doing this. Um, every time you see a, a double crochet stitch, you make a single crochet stitch in the bottom of it and a single crochet stitch in the top. And then when you see a single crochet stitch, you make a single crochet stitch into that. And you're gonna do that all the way up. Now, as you work on the sides, and you may have seen this um, going down as well, when we went work down the sides, you may see some gaps. See these gaps here? I'm gonna show you how to fix them at the end of this video if they bug you. Very easy way to fix these gaps. So go ahead and single crochet evenly all the way up and when you get near to the end come back to the video and we'll do that together so i've been working up the side making a single crochet stitch evenly all the way up and we're going to work all the way up here we're not going to make a corner until the top until we get to the top we're going to make our next corner in the top so i have another stitch i can work into here so i'm just going to make a single crochet stitch all the way up the side and again, there's no exact rules here. We just want them evenly spaced out. So now I'm quite close to the top and into the very first stitch across the top, into the top of that stitch. It is the top of a single crochet stitch. And into that stitch, I'm going to make three single crochet stitches. This is going to be my third corner. So into this stitch I'm going to make one and two and three single crochet stitches to complete my third corner. Now what we're going to do across the top here is we're only going to work into the tops of single crochet stitches and double crochet stitches. We are not going to work into the chain one stitches. We're going to skip over the chain one and work directly into the tops of double crochet stitches and the tops of single crochet stitches. Then skip the chain one. The next stitch will be a double crochet, so I'm going to work into that. Then the next stitch will be a single crochet, so I'll work into that, skip over the next chain one. So let's do this together, and you're gonna do this all the way across. So I've just made my corner stitch in the top of a single crochet stitch. So the next stitch is a chain one that I'm not gonna work into. Then in the top of the next stitch, which is a double crochet, I am going to work into that and make one single crochet stitch into that top of the double crochet stitch from the last row we completed. The next stitch is a single crochet stitch, so I will single crochet into the top of that. Then I'm going to skip over the next because the next is a chain one stitch we don't work into. And then I'm going to single crochet in the top of the next double crochet stitch. And then single crochet into the top of the next single crochet stitch. So keep repeating that all the way across and come back to the video when you're nearing the end and we'll do that together. So I'm nearing the point where I started the round. And at the end of this part where we've worked all the way across, we are going to continue single crocheting all the way across. We're not going to make a fourth corner. And the reason is it becomes way too bulky if you make a fourth corner of single crochet stitches. Instead, in the next round, we're gonna start the first corner right here. So we're all we're going to do as we complete this part of working all the way across the top, 
um, is just continue to single crochet. So I've just made a single crochet stitch in the top of a double crochet stitch. So the next stitch is a single crochet stitch that I'm going to single crochet into. And then the next stitch is a chain one. This one, chain one's very small, but it's still there. And so the last stitch I'm working into is the top of the last double crochet stitch that we completed. So into the top of that, I'm going to single crochet, and that's gonna complete our single crocheting all the way across the top. What I'm gonna do now is simply slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch that we made when we started this round. So I'm just going to slip stitch into that, and that is going to complete border round one. So once again, we are not making a fourth corner in this corner here. We've made a corner. This is our first corner, our second corner, and our third corner, but we did not make a fourth corner. And now we're in the perfect position to start the next round of the border. Now we're going to start border round two. To start border round two, we are going to chain two, one, two, and we are not going to turn. In the first stitch, the same stitch that we just made a slip stitch into, we are going to treat as our first corner stitch of border round two. And in each corner stitch, we are going to make nine double crochet stitches into the same stitch. So I'm just working into the very same stitch, the same stitch that's attached to this. So this is the stitch that I'm going to work into. It's the one that's attached to this chain two. Into this stitch I'm going to make nine double crochet stitches. So I'm just yarning over making a double crochet stitch that is my first one, and I'm going to do that a total of nine times into the same stitch. So I now have nine double crochet stitches into this same stitch. Now those nine double crochet stitches does not count the chain two that started the round. So don't count the chain two, make sure you have nine double crochet stitches into that first stitch. And that's our first of four corners now complete. For the rest of the round, we are going to double crochet, just making one double crochet in each stitch. So simply just one double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way around, except for the corners. So working down, you're gonna make a double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way down. And then for the rest of the corners, so we have three corners left, into the corner stitch, which is the middle of the three single crochet stitches that you made in the corner of the previous round, into this middle single crochet stitch, you're going to make nine double crochet stitches into this middle single crochet stitch. So you're going to double crochet, make one double crochet in each stitch all the way down in the corner, make nine double crochet stitches, and then working down across the bottom, just make one double crochet stitch all the way across until you get to the next corner, the middle, of the three single crochet stitches we made in the previous round. You're gonna make nine double crochet stitches in that. And then one double crochet stitch all the way up until the last corner. You're gonna make nine double crochet stitches into that corner. And then double crochet in each stitch across the top until you get to 
the place where we started. So when you get to the place where we started, there's the chain two that started the round. So your last stitch will be the stitch before that. Come back to the video and we are going to count all our stitches, um, but we'll do that part together. So you go ahead, double crochet all the way around, except in the corners where you'll make nine double crochet stitches in each corner. So I have just finished border round two with the exception of joining, but I've completed making my double crochet stitches all the way around with nine double crochet stitches in each corner. Now, before we join, what we're going to do is we're going to count our stitches. We're gonna count them all the way around, except for the chain two, the chain two that started the round does not count as a stitch. So other than that chain two, count your stitches all the way around every single stitch and jot down that number. So in my little sample here, I have a total of 84 stitches. The, the number of stitches doesn't matter. What matters is if the number is odd or even. We want to have an odd number of stitches. So if you count your stitches all the way around and you have an odd number, great. You can skip this next part and just per, we're gonna go, you can go right to joining the round. But in my case, I have an even number. And so what I'm going to do is make another double crochet stitch in the same stitch as the last double crochet stitch that I completed. So simply just make one more in the same stitch and that will make my stitch count for the round now be odd. So make sure that you have an odd number. And so I had an even number. I just made a second double crochet stitch in the same stitch. So now I have an odd number. And now I can complete the round by slip stitching into the top of the first double crochet stitch that we made. So into the top of that, I'm going to slip stitch and that completes the round. Now we're gonna start border round three. And the first thing we're going to do is chain two. One, two and we are not going to turn. For this round, we're going to be making front and back post stitches all the way around. So we've chained two, we have not turned. We are not going to be working around the chain two below. We're going to leave that as is, it's not gonna get worked around. So the first stitch that we're gonna work around, and when I say work around, because we're gonna make a front post double crochet stitch around the first stitch. So that's the stitch next to the chain two. So if you've never done a front post double crochet stitch before, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is yarn over. Now we're going to insert our hook from the front to the back to the right of the stitch that we're working around. So that's the stitch right there, which is next to the chain two. So my hook has gone from front to the back. You can see it out the back there. And then it's gonna come around to the left of the stitch so that the stitch is kind of poking out in front of the hook. So now I have my hook inserted the way I want to have it inserted for a front pro post double crochet, and I have two loops on my hook. That's the hardest part, is just knowing where to insert your hook, and now we get to double crochet as we normally would. So we're just gonna finish our double crochet stitch. We had already yarned over and inserted our hook, so now we're just going to yarn over again and pull the yarn through the back of the stitch there. When I say the back of the stitch, just crochet normally, nothing special just happened there. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull that yarn through two loops on our hook. So we have two loops left, left 
then yarn over again and pull that yarn through the two remaining loops. And that is our first front post double crochet stitch. Next, we're going to make a back post double crochet stitch, and we're going to be alternating front post, back post, front post, back post, always doing a double crochet front post or back post. We're going to do that all the way around, but let's do it one step at a time and now do our first back post double crochet stitch. So if you recall, when we just made our front post double crochet stitch, we took our hook and went from front to the back and then around the back of the stitch like this. That was our front post double crochet stitch. Well, back post double crochet stitch is the opposite. We are going to take our hook from the back to the front and then around the front of the stitch. So it's going to look like this when we insert our hook, okay? But because we're doing a double crochet, back post double crochet, we're gonna first yarn over. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is yarn over. Now we're gonna take our hook and we're gonna insert it from the back of our work to the front, to the right of the stitch that we're working around, and then going in front of the stitch and coming out right at the left of it. Or I should say directly at the left, left of it so you're not confused. So can you see now that the stitch is coming out of the back of my hook here? And I also have my two loops on my hook. And now we are going to double crochet as we normally would. So we yarn over and we're gonna bring that yarn all the way through the place where we've inserted our hook. So nothing special happening, we're just pulling that yarn all the way through that place where we've inserted our hook and bringing it up. So now we have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, bring that yarn through two loops on our hook. With two loops left, yarn over, bring that yarn through the last two loops. So now we've just done our first back post double crochet stitch. For the entire round, what we're going to be doing is making a front post double crochet around the next stitch, a back post double crochet around the next stitch, and then front back, front, back, all the way around. And as you can see, I'm working in the corner here. Nothing special happens in the corners. So we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So we've just done a back post double crochet. Let's do a front post next. So we yarn over, insert our hook to the right and under the stitch coming up on the left hand side. We're gonna yarn over, pull that yarn through Want you to see what I'm doing which is nothing special just pulling that yarn through the place where I've inserted my hook and then finishing my double crochet stitch as I normally would. Next let's do a back post double crochet so yarn over insert the hook from the back to the front and then move the hook over so that the stitch pops out the back then yarn over, pull that yarn through, and then finish that double crochet stitch. So you can see what I have here. We have a front post completed, then a back post, which is it's slightly behind the front post stitches, then a front post, and now a back post. So we're just gonna keep continue doing this all the way around. I'll do two more with you. So the next, since we just did a back post, we're going to do a front post. And then a back post. And you're gonna do that all the way around. When you um, get close to nearing the end of the round, come back to the video and we will join the round together. So I've made my front post and back post, post stitches almost all the way around. I have two stitches left here. These are the last two stitches I have to work around. I've just made a front post double crochet stitch before my two stitches left. So I thought we could finish the round together. So just did a front post double crochet stitch. So the next one will be a back post. 
and the final stitch should be a front post double crochet stitch. So around that last stitch, just a regular front post double crochet stitch. We are going to join the round and actually every round of the border for the rest of the blanket in the exact same way. I want you to find your first front post double crochet stitch and identify the top of that stitch because that's where we're going to slip stitch into, into the top of the first front post double crochet stitch. So not the chain two, the chain two does not get worked into at all. Poor little chain two. And we're just going to slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet stitch to join. So every round from now on for the rest of the blanket will be joined in that way. Now we're going to start border round four. And border round four and border round five are exactly the same. So we're gonna be doing the exact same thing for the last two rounds of the blanket border. So to start, we're going to chain two, one, two. Once again, we are not going to turn. Once again, we are going to leave the chain two, the poor little chain two, not unworked, just leave it completely alone. The first stitch that we're gonna be working around is the front post double crochet stitch from the round below. And we are going to make a front post double crochet stitch around the front post double crochet stitch. So we've chained two, and we're gonna make a front post double crochet stitch around this first front post double crochet stitch. All right, so I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook the way we've done it before around the stitch so it's popping out in front of my hook and then double crochet normally. So I've just made my first front post double crochet stitch. And for the rest of the pattern, we are going to repeat back, back post double crochet stitch around the back post double crochet stitch from the row below, front post double crochet stitch around the front post double crochet stitch from below, and just repeat those two steps all the way around. I'll do just a couple more with you here. So I've just uh, done my first front post double crochet stitch. Now let's do our first back post double crochet stitch for it round four, which is again the same as what we'll be doing for round five. So I've yarned over, I'm going to insert my hook around the stitch below. So the stitch is popping out the back of my hook like that, yarning over, pulling that yarn through, and then double crocheting normally. So we have a back post double crochet stitch now complete. Now let's do a front post double crochet stitch, stitch next. Once so I get rid of all the dog hair. All right, so there's a front post double crochet around the front post double crochet from the round below. And that is what we're gonna be doing all the way around. We're gonna do a back post double crochet stitch. And once again, nothing special happens at the corners. We're just gonna repeat the same pattern all the way around. So I just did a back post, so now I'm doing a front post. And you are going to do that all the way around. And when you get back to where you started, it's the exact same ending as we did in the previous round. So your last stitch is going to be a front post double crochet stitch around the front post double crochet stitch from below. And then you don't do anything with the chain two, you're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet, front post double crochet stitch that we made into the top of that is where you'll slip stitch to complete the round. And you're gonna do that for all of round four and, and do that whole thing again for round five. And then after finishing round five, all we need to do now is fasten off and weave in all the loose ends. So I'm going to pretend that I've just finished round five. 
So to fasten off, we're just gonna cut our yarn and bring the yarn through the loop and pull tight and then attach the yarn to our yarn needle and weave in our loose ends. I want to show you one optional thing is you may see some gaps. These are the gaps that you may see in between the border and the blanket body. What I'm going to do is take, not, I'm not gonna take my end, um, I'm just gonna weave my end into the border and hide it in there. But what I am gonna do is take a really long strand of yarn and with my yarn needle, I am going to weave in these gaps just so that there's not a big hole in between. And there's not going to be anything fancy about this technique other than just putting my yarn needle through the stitches and weaving and just hiding the yarn so you can't even tell I'm doing this. But I'm gonna do this all the way up so that you really can't see any of the gaps because they really bugged me. <laughs> so if they bug you too, um, this is a very easy way of just taking your yarn needle. And I find this pattern is very, very forgiving for um, hiding your yarn in it. So it won't be very noticeable that you're doing this, but keep it loose so you don't create even more gaps. But it's just um, from when we did our, our the start of the border, um, I think it, So this is um, how you can close up these gaps is just simply by weaving in a large strand of yarn. And once you're happy that all the gaps have been closed, and this is not this is completely optional whether you'd like to do this. I just found that um, this blanket just needed some extra finishing. So you can see there where I've finished, um, where I've sort of tightened those gaps, I think looks better than the side where there's some bigger holes. So I would do that on the other side as well. And then once you're finished, just weave in these ends as well. And you now have a brand new blanket. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy making this blanket. I'm here if there's anything at all I can do to help. I'd love to see your finished blanket. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.